views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. This show's audio was via a Skype call. Welcome to Angel Healing House Radio. My name is Claire Candy Hoff. Through my business, Angel Healing House, which can be found at angelhealinghouse.com. I'm a writer and an author, an international radio host, a Reiki master teacher, and an angel practitioner. My inspirational books entitled Angels of Faith and One True Home Behind the Veil of Forgetfulness and my autobiography, I Am an Angelic Walk-In, are based on my recollections of our life in spirit, and they help us to remember our divine, eternal natures. Through Angel Healing House, I help people to let go of sadness, anger, bitterness, resentment, and regret that has kept them locked in the prison of the past, and I help them to let go of worry, stress, and control which has kept them focused on an imagined future. And once they are no longer living in the past or the future, they can start to live in the present moment, which is the only place that they can experience synchronicities, miracles, and magic. As an angel practitioner, I help people to see their lives from a higher perspective with the help of an extraordinary group of angels who call themselves the Posse of Angels. Just like my angelic family, the Posse of Angels, I'm very excited to take some of your calls for that free angel advice. You can call into the show on 1-800-930-2819. But before we get to those callers, welcome everyone once again to Angel Healing House Radio with myself, Claire Candy Hoff. I hope everyone that was celebrating had an absolutely beautiful holiday season filled with health and love and peace and joy. And uh, oh, I wish everyone at this time of the year, regardless if you're celebrating it um, at all, a beautiful holiday season um, as we are about to walk into, be dragged into, or jump into 2018. You know, so often it's at the end of each year that we, many of us, get nostalgic and we take a look back at the previous year and we look back at the choices and the decisions that we made. You know, everyone, if we made those decisions without compromising our principles and honoring and ex- and really respecting ourselves, then because the laws of cause and effect, we would, have, we would have experienced a year in which then life honored us. We honored ourselves, made honorable choices, and then life would have reflected this back to us. Yet if our choices saw us perhaps settling for less, if our choices came from being triggered and reactive, then then um, many of us would have experienced some sort of results, but perhaps the results may have been less than we had expected and had anticipated. The Posse of Angels wishes to speak about the blessing of free will that we all have been given and our ability to make choices on our journey throughout life. And even though we have free will of either making choices or even choosing not to make a choice, we may allow external forces to influence our decision making our being influenced and swayed as to what to do, how to act, even as to what to eat, what to buy, especially at this time of the year with uh, 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 
um, so much holidays being commercialized and everyone pushing their special whatever it is at this time of the year. And it's, it's very apparent how this happens around the holidays. For instance, on the subject of what to eat, eggnog to me never tastes the same before December 1st and after Christmas Day. In this category of not consuming things before or after a certain date, along with my eggnog, I would add candy canes, plum pudding, and fruitcake, only to be consumed between December 1st and December 25th. And even though I know that after these dates, these things are still fresh and they're fine, my brain tells me not to have them as those things associated with the holidays are somehow past their use-by date. They're fine up until December 25th, December 26th, not fine. Go figure. This is a choice, and I admit that it's a rather strange one without much logic behind it. I guess it's just that my taste buds have been programmed to no longer desire these seasonal treats after the date of December 25th has gone. Now come to think of it, although not rationally, there are some other seasonal things that many others like myself see as being particularly time sensitive. Traditionally, watching Christmas movies for me only happens between those dates. I'm not sure when this rigid mindset of mine began, but I'm starting to surmise that I may be limiting my enjoyment factor. For instance, I have a friend who suffers from depression, and she tells me that nothing, absolutely nothing, lifts her spirits quite like watching the Jimmy Stewart movie, It's a Wonderful Life, and she watches it throughout the year. Although totally illogical, my seasonal choices have been dictated by my free will, by my habit, and nothing else. It's like having a default setting on your computer that was set so that you could forget it. With this programming having been set to a certain way at a certain time frame, it will only change, change once I make the choice to go into the settings and purposely change it. And many of the traditions that we follow are nothing more than things that we have been culturally brought up to expect. And we do them without very, with with very little thought to why we are doing them and as to what it actually means. With New Year's Eve coming up at the end of this week, many of us will be staying up late and at the stroke of midnight, we will be heralding in the brand new year of 2018. And the first choice that many people will be making to welcome in 2018 is by going to a default program and saying the words happy in front of New Year. This is a traditional response that so many people utter, and they do it unconsciously without even realizing it. And for many, it's the first choice that they make in the few seconds of a new year. The wishing of a new happy new year will be uttered over and over and over again. And unlike the holidays where, you know, some people celebrate a Christmas, a Hanukkah, a Kwanzaa. Some people just celebrate the festivals, the, the festive season. Some people don't celebrate. But all over the world, in different parts of the globe, in many different languages, this utterance of happy new year, it just cuts across all races, cultures, everything. With this rather automatic response, the Posse of Angels is sharing with us that out of the billions and billions of people on the planet, there are uncomparatively few people who make the choice of expressing either at the top of their lungs, either with too much champagne in them, <laughs> or in another form. There are very few people who say, Unhappy New Year. With the utterance of these words, Happy New Year, the Posse of Angels wishes to delve deeper and ask, 
if this is in fact what one chooses to say, then exactly what are we wishing them happiness for? Perhaps the happy in front of New Year would be to wish someone happiness in their finances. That's a lot of people when they have a happy New Year wish. I wish to be more uh, financially secure. And we wish them a continual abundant cash flow in their lives. It could be that the happy in the new year is pertaining to the happiness in our relationships. And may they be filled with love and kindness and respect. I know that, uh, that many people wish others happiness in their relationships. Now, the happiness in the new year wishes could be directed at someone's health for everything in their physical, mental, emotional, and their spiritual bodies to be in divine alignment to their optimum wellness. That's a great happy, uh, happy wish for a new year. So why, if we choose to wish happy new year, do then many of us choose, sometimes even in the few minutes after we say that, if not the next day, after to choose, then we choose something unhappy to put our focus on. And if our words are focused in any way on anything that makes us unhappy, well, we will just manifest and draw more of the same unhappiness to ourselves. You know, last year I had a client whose husband left her for a younger woman. And she was dreading, absolutely dreading, the upcoming holiday season. Although in years past, she loved the holidays. She loved uh, the festive music. She loved um, getting dressed up. And she enjoyed bringing in the new year. Uh, but this new year would be very different from her, for her. Because after uh, being with her husband for many years, or her ex, she would be alone for the first time um, as she divorced her husband 10 months ago. Now, the posse of angels, they winked at her and they said, just go to this holiday party and go with the intention of experiencing joy, nothing more. She then timidly said, and what do I do, posse of angels? What do you suggest? that I do at the stroke of midnight when there is no one to kiss. They told her to close her eyes and say a prayer of gratitude that she was no longer with someone who deceived her. He was having an affair with uh, this younger woman for quite some time. So she could always say a prayer that she was no longer with someone who lied to her. And allowed her happiness to be stolen and to make a wish for a more honoring love to enter her life. Upon making the wish, the posse of angels advised her to send a huge kiss to the universe and all the angels in advance for fulfilling her intention of being with just such an honoring love that she, in that moment, knew that that beautiful love was there in the etheric because it was her love he just had not manifested on the earth plane as yet. Armed with this plan to usher in the new year and her honoring her intentions, my client was amazed how much lighter she felt and how her worry and her anxieties melted away. This is because she chose to put her focus on happiness instead of being right. Yes, when you look at it that way, she was rightfully um, allowed to, uh, you know, to feel resentment and bitterness and anger and sadness for her marriage breaking down. But she in that conscious state, she chose to focus on her awareness of being happy and going with that intention of fulfilling her joy. I guess the whole point of their discussion is that we live in a very deliberate universe 
and absolutely nothing ever is left to hands with the laws of cause and effect always working for us. The more that we choose in our every thought, in our every word, and every feeling in our heart to have a happy new year in 2018, the more we will reap the benefits of happiness in the coming year and years to come. If you are one, Okay, here come the posse of angels. They're saying, (laughs) if you are one for making New Year's resolutions, well, they're reminding us that our wishes are not outside of ourselves, but that we are the carriers and we are the creators of our dreams. So the first step to manifest this happy new year is to choose to stay in a vibrational frequency of joy. No matter what happens in our lives, this can be accomplished by setting our own navigational course and then following our hearts in integrity as we stay true to who we are and to our dreams. Now, this is not about hiding our heads in the sand. This is not about uh, not being aware of what's happening on a global level. This is about seeing it through very different eyes, seeing all the contrast, uh, the revelations, all the disclosures, all those things with the Me Too hashtags and sexual harassment about finally things being able to be seen so that they can be acknowledged. We can thank the contrast. We can bless it so that we can finally release it. And knowing this, then we don't get triggered and we don't lose our light and we don't lose the beautiful vibrational frequency of love, unconditional love, forgiveness, peace, and unity, which the world is crying out for and has for thousands upon thousands of years. Now, secondly, the Posse of Angels is reminding us to always come from a place of love. Whatever the question is, the answer is love. But love tempered with the spiritual wisdom that is within all of us by seeing the beauty in everyone. And I do mean everyone. We choose to see them for the divine beings that they are underneath their choices. Remember that choices are often made and they often come from a very hurt, sad, angry, and insecure child within that is just negatively reacting to the world. And if we haven't put all of those things back into divine alignment, then what happens is something happens and it triggers us inside. It triggers that sadness, that hurt, that insecure place, and then we react. Regardless of what a person does, says, or how they act, we can still choose happiness over resentment by sending them energies of healing, blessings, unconditional love, and forgiveness to bring back their hurt into alignment within the the light of God. As I've stated many times on this program, if we rise above our humanness, and we see another person from an angel's perspective, then there's more of a chance that we will not take anything personally and be able to see them through the eyes of God. The next point that the Posse of Angels is saying is that the clean slate of the new year is giving us an opportunity to create a whole new reality by changing any old default programming that might be coming from our own hurt, sadness, and replacing them with, again, unconditional love, faith, hope, tolerance, patience, and forgiveness. Then we project our thoughts onto the highest outcomes. By doing so, we actively align with our divine eternal natures, And we affirm our intentions of always coming from a place of love. 
with no conditions and no restrictions on it. Remember that no restrictions and conditions within us means that in our lives, we will be encouraging no restrictions and no conditions to happen in our reality. Okay, now the Posse of Angels are saying that it is good to set goals and perhaps have some resolutions. But once your intentions are set, it is paramount to allow yourself to be guided by the winds of heaven. It's important to remember that we are spirit. We signed on for human adventure and are in a co-creative dance with God and the angels. And, on, and in order to experience the optimum magic, the ex absolutely unlimited miracles and synchronicities and unbelievable limitless possibilities, we must then go and surrender the how and the when as to the fulfillment of our intentions. Now, the Posse of Angels is reminding us by saying, please, do not try to figure out 2018 and start overanalyzing it in your head. Because as they've said many times before, life is not meant to be figured out. It's meant to be experienced. For when the universe sends those unplanned synchronistic winds to change the direction of your sails, it is showing a different course that will easily present magic and miracles for the fulfillment of your intentions, your wishes, and your goals. No matter how diligently you've planned and scheduled your life otherwise, so many of us, many of us can expect the unexpected and to be open to receive those, uh, those uh, winds of change that are going to be coming in in 2018. A very, very happy new year will be increased by those who are 100% authentic and absolutely truthful. Being true to who you are invites more truth into your life, truthful situations, truthful people, by being your impeccable self. No one else is like you. There may be similar people out there, but we all have different fingerprints. We're like snowflakes. No two of us is exactly alike. By being your impeccable self, you will allow and choose happiness without it being dependent on anything else. Please do remember that you're in competition with no one. By allowing yourself to be brave and be courageous, to break through any restrictions and conditions as to whether you will experience happiness, then happiness becomes your closest ally and it aids you in creating not only a happy new year, but pathways for more joy to find you in 2018. You've been listening to me, Claire Candy Hoff, on Angel Healing House Radio. And uh, with this being the last show of 2017, Angel Healing House Radio with myself is about to embark on our seventh year. Our seventh year in radio in 2018. Very exciting for us. Before we do go to the break... I did want to remind everyone that we are still very much under the influence of the new moon and the new moon was in Saturn and this new moon um, is getting us to stand up and finally be counted. And although Saturn is usually a very hard taskmaster, a lot of people don't like Saturn, there is a loving influence of the beautiful planet of Venus that rules my sign Libra, and the awakening influence of Uranus will bring out the best of Saturn in this time around. Saturn is about hard work and discipline and diligence, but this new moon will focus on our hard work and our achievements that we already put in. For it is now time for us to reap the benefit 
our diligence, with our recognition and rewards coming to so many of us in 2018. Now think back to the previous years when many of us received very strong intuitive hits to do something like write a book, create a radio station, write blogs, do newsletters, make films, do YouTubes, create songs and music, and nothing seemingly happened with any of these things. We did not see what result they might have had when we shared it with the world. But the Posse of Angels is now saying that this happened because it simply was not the best time and that the humanity didn't shift its consciousness to recognize us. Well, hold on to your bootstraps because now that Mercury has gone direct, many of us will receive the communication from those who not only recognize us and our achievements, but they will want to promote, endorse, and offer us opportunities to take our message of love, hope, peace, and unity out to a much wider audience. You know, there is this feeling of liberation to enjoy more freedom, to leave our comfort zone and widen our social circle with and start to meet extraordinary people that share our vision in what we wish to create. Now, with Uranus being a very big effect on Saturn right now, we can expect unexpected events and revelations, new opportunities, wonderful jobs to reinvigorate our lives. And they might be coming, they actually might be coming by and um, offers to move to another state, to move to another country. The Posse of Angels are saying, please be open to the fulfillment of your desires and Get ready to step in to an extraordinary 2018 by being your authentic self. Again, you've been listening to me, Claire Candy Hoff, on Angel Healing House Radio. When we come back, we'll take some of your calls for those free angel readings. You can call into the show on 1-800-930-2819. See you soon. Have you discovered the remarkable books at angelhealinghouse.com? Author Claire Candy Hoff has channeled rare books of inspiration and insight. Angels of Faith is an inspiring story of healing, comfort, and hope that reminds us that death is not to be feared, but embraced with joy. One True Home Behind the Veil of Forgetfulness takes readers on a roller coaster ride through Angel Ariel's five most important lives on Earth, as well as her experiences in the afterlife, and helps us remember our own journey across the veil. And Claire Candy's autobiography, I Am an Angelic Walk In, which details the 2003 soul exchange that took place when Claire Candy walked out of her body and Angel Ariel walked in, creating heaven on Earth for herself and others. To find out more about these wonderful books, visit angelhealinghouse.com today. To see your life from an angel's perspective, book a personal consultation with Claire Candy Huff, angelic walk-in angel Ariel at Angel Healing House. Candy provides intuitive counseling, Reiki, and angel readings in person in Los Angeles or nationally and internationally via phone or Skype. She will channel the practical tools you need to transform your life. Call now, 831-277-3716, or visit angelhealinghouse.com. Hello, everyone. You are back with Angel Healing House Radio with myself, Claire Candy Hoff. And once again, if you are if you tuned in late, I am wishing everyone an amazing holiday season um, uh, with gifts of unconditional love, with gifts of happiness, with gifts of joy and peace, unity and harmony in the world. Uh, and uh, uh, these are these are. Gifts not traditionally left under a Christmas tree or in any other uh, 
um, place, but uh, but usually they are placed in our hearts. And uh, wouldn't those be a wonderful things? Uh, or wouldn't those be wonderful things to unwrap at this time of the year? So let's go to our first caller. We've got Stephanie on the line. Stephanie from New York, you're on the line with Angel Healing House Radio and Claire Candy Hoff. How are you, Stephanie? Hi. Um, uh, I'm a little down, actually. Oh, I'm and, sorry to hear uh, that. I, you know, I was listening to what you were saying. Um, but I've had, you know, I've had a tough time the last couple of weeks, I guess, you know, getting back to that state of, you know, joy and gratitude and awe <laughs> that I was in last we spoke. Um, you know, just there's been family stuff where, you know, there's, they excluded me again on the holidays, which was disappointing. Um, and then I've had, you know, the health issues and then, uh, you know, that person with the threatening text who's maybe even as a stalker and it's it's hard to sort of shift all that stuff away from my focus or my attention and I've been uh challenged with that and um you know and uh, you know I'm worried about my health as well so I guess I'm kind of open to what they want to say about whatever area I'm not really sure what is the most important thing to address oh uh, well, actually, it's an important thing that, that you did bring up, Stephanie, because there is such a buildup uh, to the holidays. Um, some, like myself, I mean, I, I usually get uh, this such a giddiness inside of me. I usually put the tree up uh, December 1st, but this, this uh, year I couldn't wait, and I put it up the day after Thanksgiving on uh, Black Friday. And... Um, and, you know, uh, adding ornaments and just, you know, adding to the decorations. And there's such a buildup and there's also such an expectation that we have over the holidays that a lot of people don't talk about uh, the letdown. And the letdown could could be the letdown that we didn't get the gifts that we asked for. Could be that uh, our expectations and attachments uh you know, no matter um, what they were, were not met by, you know, we offered an olive, olive branch to um, to somebody and, uh, you know, and we invited them over and we were kind and perhaps they were not. Perhaps, you know, they were cold. Perhaps, you know, their uh, reactions to us were very different. And so there is this um, uh, possibility for this major letdown after the holiday season. Um, and uh, and that comes primarily because of the expectation and attachment that we have that things should go a certain way. Now, um, with what you said about, um, you did mention something about a stalker? Well, um, I think it was last weekend on Saturday I got a text so, and this is the other thing, I guess, that was a bit of a challenge. So I reached out to this organization, I think like six months ago, that I thought might be helpful um, with me getting the services I needed with my insurance company and, and some other stuff. And I, you know, someone would come and then disappear. And then months later, someone else would come and disappear. And then one day I was in my kitchen and someone was buzzing and it caught me by surprise, but she said she was the one now from the company to help. And um, and it seemed like at first that she she wasn't going to just make one appearance and then disappear. So I had thought mistakenly that, you know, my life was turning around and I was finally getting support, you know, because I am generally kind of unsupported in lots of areas. And... Um, but then she insisted on coming into my guy, my appointment that I had with the new gynecologist that uh -huh. um, I called in that day. And she kept telling me I had no choice and she had to come, which I wasn't really comfortable with. Uh -huh. And, you know, freaked out when I, when I went to check in and she didn't see me, even though I told her I was checking in. I was like, you know, I told her I was in the bathroom and then I opened the door and she was right outside the door and, and she was writing down everything in the appointment and um, wanted to stay for the physical part. And uh, somebody else who worked there told her she couldn't be and they had to sort of block her body from coming in the room. And uh, it just it was uh, uncomfortable. Yeah. And so 
And the doctor wanted to do a biopsy on a certain date, so she knew that date because she was there for that. And, you know, I was really upset and I couldn't sleep that night. It, it was just a really just strange experience for me and there was a little more to it. So I ended up, and she wanted me to sign these forms that had nothing to do with me and, and my health. And it was just, it was kind of alarming. So I ended up speaking to her supervisor the next uh-huh. day and I found out I did have a choice after all. I could have told her I didn't want her in there. Right. So she wasn't honest about that. But I gave her the benefit of the doubt and I said, well, maybe you could just explain it. Maybe she's new and she doesn't know that and I don't want her to uh-huh. get in trouble. And she said, oh, she won't get in trouble. Um, but then I believe it's her that sent me these messages last week. And it said that um, the reason why I have health issues is because God doesn't like me and is punishing me and I need to repent. And Okay, let's and hold. Let, let's coming. just stop. Let, uh, Stephanie, let's just stop there. When you say those words, how she said, you're ill because, uh, how does that make you feel? Does that, was does sad, that, and it was kind of, I know it's sad, but does that is that truthful for you? Well, no. I mean, I, at first I thought it was a wrong number because it was just such a weird thing. And I said, like, I think you have the wrong person. And then it said, no, I know who you are. I know exactly who you okay. are. And I know where you live. And I know where okay. you eat. And I know okay, where you the, go. Po- okay, the posse of angels, you. okay, the posse of angels are jumping in here and they're saying this. If you brought this which we all co-create. Everything that happens to us, we co-create for ourselves. This was another opportunity for you to bless this person, no matter where she is, and to thank the co- thank the contrast for coming into your life and to say, well, if this came into my life, it gave me an opportunity to show somebody unconditional love and forgiveness and to follow my intuition. Because if, if somebody says, you know, you did this because you're not repenting or anything like this, and if this, this is not your truth, it doesn't have to be your truth. Um, but also for you to set up limits and boundaries so that next time you know when somebody, uh, you know, comes into your life and it doesn't feel it doesn't feel like it's nourishing and nurturing you, it doesn't feel to be your truth, then you can stop it. Um, And they said that this is just another opportunity for you to follow your intuition and to stop this. I'm going to go to the cards because we have a few other callers to get to. So let me go to the cards and see what comes out. First card that comes out for you is the Ten of Swords. Uh, The Ten of Swords is that card of uh, feeling feeling stabbed, uh, feeling wounded, uh, you know, um, things being really, you know, um, not uh, not feeling good in your life, I guess, but we're really feeling stabbed. Um, and now you can understand from a higher perspective that you brought this to yourself uh, because it's the contrast that is going to get you to see this person as a divine being, uh, that you co-created this in order for you to practice unconditional love and forgiveness. Uh, Next card that comes out for you is the, um, the, the, sorry, the, um, the high priestess. This is to get your intuition on and to not wear it sometimes, but to wear it all the times. You know, a lot of people follow their spiritual practices um, at certain times during meditation, when they're in workshops or whatever, but they don't practice it at other times when they have the contrast of someone in front of them uh, that is really pushing their buttons. Um, And this is to follow that intuition of yours about uh, giving everyone the benefit of the doubt, but setting up limits and boundaries um, and honoring yourself. And the next one is that five of pentacles. The five of pentacles is often that card of, of not feeling worthy and deserving of being treated with respect. Um, and, uh, and the posse of angels are saying that there has been a history of this feeling of not uh, expecting others to expect you and not standing up for yourself. So this was a great opportunity for you to learn this once again so that you can take it into 2018. Got to go, Stephanie. Thank you so much for your call. Um, okay, thanks. Can I just ask if they think I should reschedule my biopsy, like how many steps I should be taking around this? Should you be rescheduling? Uh, no, they say uh, they're just saying, no, uh, don't reschedule it. 
So I've got to go. I'm sending you lots of okay, love for thank you. beautiful 2018. Bye bye. Let's go to our next caller. We have Beth. Beth is in California. Hello, Beth. How are you today? Beth, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Oh, lovely to hear from How you. How are you? I'm well. Lovely to hear. Good. Um, probably should have asked this question before I just sent the text. But um, <laughs> um, I just sent the text and um, response to some challenges that I've been having. And I was just curious what the um, posse and the cards would say about it all. Okay. So um, I didn't read the full text. Uh, let me just... Uh, uh, this has to do with uh, challenges with family members and their choices, yeah. correct? Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, the first, the first thing that the posse of angels are saying this uh, is um, they don't understand why you're getting upset by this. I don't, don't understand either. Okay. Because okay, they're saying that you want to be right instead of choosing happiness. The, the okay. choices that our relatives, or anyone else for that matter, makes is their spiritual journey. They get to make those choices. They have, they have been blessed with free will and free choice, just like we have. I'll be damned if I ever would allow anybody to judge me on my choices. I'm allowed to make my choices. I'm a, and, and this person may see it as a tragedy me coming out and telling everybody that I'm an angelic walk-in, and this person may applaud me. This person may applaud me and say, gee, you're courageous, gee, you're brave, and this other person over here may say, you're the stupidest person in the world. Oh, my gosh. You're just opening yourself up for more backlash or goodness knows what. And and if we if we keep going around this carousel, Beth, over and over and over again of putting our peace, our happiness, our joy, um, our bliss, and our connection to source, if we keep allowing anybody's choices that they make to hijack that, then we open ourselves up to be um, a marionette, a puppet for what the government says we should do, what society tells us to do, what our family says we should do, you know, what we say that we should, there are no shoulds. And they, these people, these relatives of yours are allowed to make their decisions. And it has nothing to do with you. It has, so, but you have a choice. You're blessed with free will and free choice as well. You can choose to uh, associate with them. You have a few choices, actually. You can choose to associate with them and not let it affect you, or you can choose to not associate with them, and and then you know there will because there will always be consequences with things. But for you so to it, be for you to be upset for you to be upset about others' choices is allowing yourself to be hijacked. Well, if the other's choices have an impact on you because it impacts you, is it not okay to express the, how it impacts you? Oh, yes, you can express that. That's fine. You you can say, um, uh, you know, um, your decision is is uh, causing me or is having this effect on me. But but say it once and then put it to rest. Because a lot of people will say, well, then I, am I not allowed to, uh, to respond? Yes, respond. But then they keep, keep, uh, keep the, um, uh, the negativity or the, um, the, the feelings of unsettledness. They keep going and going and going. Like, for instance, uh, uh, when the former soul uh, divorced her ex, um, uh, and then she could years and years before the walk-in experience, she put down her ex. She was angry. She was bitter. She was resentful. She wanted to make it right by telling as many people that she was hurt and, you know, and she was wrongly done by, um, and her life spiraled into negativity and darkness. Um, yes, 
get it out of your system and then put it to rest and then put it to rest and well, then don't what, talk. Yeah. That's, well, that's how I feel that um, I haven't been getting it out. I've just been processing it myself and telling my spouse to just process it and not tell them and they just keep continuing to do things. So that's why I decided to let them know how it's made us feel and just put it to rest because they obviously don't know because we haven't shared with them how hurt we are and they haven't um, and they've dismissed any comments we've made about um, how their behavior is impacting us. So that's why I decided to just finally put it on, put it into a text and send it to them. And and because you've done that already. Like we keep we, yes. Okay, you've done that already. Okay. Before, yeah. Okay, that's fine. How did you feel when you did that? My whole, I didn't feel very great afterwards. But now, after I've released it, I feel better. But at first, I had felt a lot of anxiety. But I knew it was because I could feel the energy around the whole message and about them how they would receive it. So once I just told myself that that it's not my responsibility of what they do with this message and that mm -hmm. I needed to speak the truth, then my body calmed down. Right, right. So now, now it almost doesn't matter what response they make. Exactly, exactly. Okay, all right. And, yeah. Um, yeah. but you do have choices. The reason I wasn't doing it, the reason I wasn't communicating it is because I was afraid of how they were going to respond and, and to not share my truth and not speak up because of fear just doesn't feel right. No, absolutely. Uh, you know, we state, um, you know, we state how we feel, but then what uh, a lot of people become attached to, then what the person should do or how they should act as a result of okay. that. And they, they really feel smacked yeah. in the face. Uh, when the response they yeah. get well, is, I don't expect, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's yeah, go to the card. I don't expect anything. Yeah. So, but you know, we we stand up and we are brave and we are courageous. Um, and they are saying yes. This took a lot of uh, being courageous on your part. Um, uh, but yeah, um, I hear it like five times before I sent it. You know, like, should I send it? Should I send it? Should I send it? And I kept getting a yes, even though I didn't want to send it. <laughs> well, if you if you if if you didn't send it, let's just say this: if you didn't send it, and then you limited the time that you spend with them, um, and uh, yeah. th their feelings would be, hey, you know, why don't we see you um, as much as the other family, exactly. or why, you know? Uh, so now it's. Um, uh, you know, we feel this way and you've gotten it out in the open and therefore, and therefore because of this, we are going to limit our time that we spend with you, you know, because we're treated in such an offhanded manner or, you know, we are not honored and exactly. respected. Okay. So, so that exactly. they have to, they, so that they can understand that it's not just coming out of the blue and that there are consequences to this. Exactly. Yes, exactly. exactly. Mm -hmm. So the exactly. first card that comes. them. They, they they live in their. Own. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. That's okay. All right. I was going to say that the first card is the, uh, coming out for you is the um, is the page of wands. The page of wands is a uh, probably the most um, fiery of of all the pages. It's about delivering messages. Um, uh. Uh, <laughs> and you know. Uh, he doesn't he doesn't mince words um he delivers them you know uh you know straight from the hip and this is how i feel um and you know not being mean when he's doing it but you know he's doing it in a very forthright uh, manner um and uh and the posse of angels are applauding you they're applauding you for speaking up and uh which uh to uh to many uh who uh, are so helpful um, to so many others. We don't like to muddy the waters, um, you know, but exactly. if this is impacting on us, then we do have to uh, voice, um, you know, what we believe and, uh, and how we feel. Uh, the next card that's coming out for you is the fool. And the fool in tarot, uh, for those that may not know, mm -hmm. is, is anything but a fool. Uh, the fool is being, uh, is starting over. 
and they're saying that that in many ways you yeah it's as if you are you are seeing yourself as um that inner child you know um and starting over that i won't allow things to simmer i will express myself exactly and i will allow exactly. myself to to then then be led be led by spirit and the next one is the justice card it which is the truth which is yes. speaking the truth yes. and allowing allowing your truth yes. to come out so um again they're yes. applauding you um and um yes. and and they're saying that this is going to bode well this is going to really bode well for you as you go into 2018 because if you speak yes. is, you know as i've said before many times on this program um uh our biological families uh, that we contract these souls uh, uh, who sometimes you know are so 180 degrees opposite from us you know we just cannot fathom how they're part of the family or we're part of that family um uh, they they were contracted uh to show us extraordinary contrast and um and for us to learn lessons in unconditional love and tolerance and patience and acceptance and forgiveness and all of those things. So, but they're saying that if you can learn this lesson through one of your most important teachers, who, who are these relatives, um, then this is going to bode well for you going into 2018. So I hope that's been helpful. Oh, extremely helpful, extremely helpful, because it means that I did what I needed to do. I needed to stand in my truth and speak my truth and then let it go. Absolutely. Uh, and there will, there, no doubt, no doubt there will be lash back. But, uh, but yes. of course, you can't, uh, you can't control what another person does or says. And so you bless whatever comes back as a result of that. Exactly. I, I just kept biting my tongue, and that was really painful. That's yeah. It is very painful because uh, it's it needs to come out. It needs to be said. But uh, and then once you release it, then you've brought it into d divine yeah. alignment inside of yourself. I'm wishing yeah. you an extraordinarily exactly. happy new year. Yes, you too, Angel. You too. Love you so much, and thank you so much for all that you do and for who you are and everything. You're just so divine. Love you dearly. Love you dearly too, Beth. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay, baby. Bye-bye. And that just about wraps the show up today. Thank you so much, all of my callers who have called in to Angel Healing House. Thank you to all my listeners. Um, throughout the world you know i've gotten such amazing calls in the last uh last six years you know from england and ireland and jordan and it, it's just all spain <laughs> italy um people who have connected with myself the posse of angels and all that angel healing house stands for unconditional love forgiveness unity and harmony uh once again i not only wish all of you i wish the planet to finally step into a 2018 where we are bathed in that unity, unconditional love, forgiveness, peace, and so that we can, uh, we can all experience the love and the light, which is our divine birthright. Um, and, uh, and I'm wishing you all of your wishes to come true <laughs> and everything that you wish for yourself. So I'm sending you lots of love and, of course, angel blessings. And I look forward to speaking with you again next, next week in 2018. Bye, everyone. Mm -hmm.